Well guys, this will be the first video to review content that we went over in class last week. Uh, so on this video, I'm going to do a quick introduction of Grasshopper and start going over the interface. Uh, so basically Grasshopper is a plugin for Rhino. Uh, on previous versions before Rhino 7, it used to be a separate program that you had to download and install. Uh, after Rhino 7, it became part of Rhino. So as long as you have Rhino installed, and if it's Rhino 7, uh, it's going to have Grasshopper already uh, installed in it. Uh, so Grasshopper is primarily used to build algorithms. You can think of algorithms as a set of rules uh, that need to be followed. In this case, Grasshopper, uh, you're going to set the rules in Grasshopper, and uh, they're going to be followed by Rhino. So Basically, Rhino is the visualization tool uh, for Grasshopper. So whatever you build in Grasshopper is going to be shown in the Rhino viewports. Uh, for the purposes of this class, we will be using uh, the algorithms to create 3D, uh, 3D geometry. And to start Grasshopper, basically what you need to do is just type in Grasshopper on the command bar. and it'll open a window that looks like this. Uh, for purposes of working and with Grasshopper and Rhino, it would be better if you're using two screens so that you can have uh, Rhino on one screen and Grasshopper on the other. Uh, if you're working with one single screen, then you would want to do a uh, split screen so that you can see both windows on the same screen. The first thing after you open Rhino and Grasshopper would be to set the units. Uh, so Grasshopper is unitless. So whatever units you have here, they're going to be just, uh, for example, 1, 10, 15. But it doesn't have an actual unit. So it doesn't have either feet or uh, meters or millimeters, centimeters, whatever it is, either imperial uh, or metric. So the units are going to be input in Rhino. So let's go ahead and set the units on the Rhino file. So for that, you will type in units in the command line. And then you will change two inches. So from millimeters, which is the default to inches. And then you're going to change the distance display uh, to feet and inches and hit OK. After setting the units, what you need to do would be to save the files. Always remember to save your files. Uh, so you will save the Grasshopper file. And I would recommend that you save the Grasshopper file with the exact same name uh, that you gave the Rhino file. So this one, file save. Oops. This one let me save because I haven't made any changes. Let's put this here. So now that I have saved both of my files, uh, one thing that you need to know is if for any reason, by mistake or otherwise, you close the Grasshopper uh, window, you didn't actually close it. It's still, uh, you didn't lose anything if you were working on it and then you accidentally close it. Uh, what you need to do is just type in Grasshopper again and it will open the window. Uh, you can think of this as just minimizing the window and you just don't find it. Uh, so by running the command line, by typing in Grasshopper again, it'll open the same window. A, you won't lose any information this way. But if you close the Rhino window by mistake, see what's going to happen. So Grasshopper gives you a final kind of warning or a final opportunity to save the file. Uh, it says you have unsaved documents. This is your last chance to save changes. So if this happens, that means that you made changes and they were not saved before you closed your Rhino window. So this gives you a last chance to save. So you should take that. 
So what you need to do is just click on the floppy disk icon and any work that you did will be saved. Let's open this back up again. So to open Grasshopper, you can either type in Grasshopper again, but if you already have a file that already has information in it, you can actually just drag it in the, gra in the Rhino window and it will open Grasshopper with that file that you already have something in. Uh, right now this is empty. It's not because it's a new file. It's because I haven't done anything to it. Now moving on to the user interface. Uh, so on the top you have uh, the typical menus that you would have it in, on any other program. You have file, which contains new document, open document, recent files, uh, save document, save document as, preferences, and other options. So most of these are uh, typical for most uh, programs. This one on recent files, if for some reason you forgot where you saved your uh, Grasshopper file, this will give you a list of the files that you've been working on. And if you notice, it tells you when you were working on it. So just now I was working on this file on Thursday, I was working on this one. And if you actually want to go to the location of this file, if you hover over it, it'll tell you the path. You can see that it says uh, D drive spring 22 dash arch 222 weekly materials. The next one is typical, uh, just like in other programs, you have undo, redo, cut, copy, paste paste in place, etc. Uh, so I won't go over all of this, but just think of this as uh, you know your typical menus that you have on every other program. The next one over is important. So this is organized in tabs. Each of these tabs have panels. So the panels are the ones that have the dark uh, bar at the bottom with a name. So in this case, this one is geometry panel, primitive panel, input panel, utilities panel. Within each of these panels, you have components. These are called components. So the structure of the user interface here, which contains all the tools that you will be using, is tabs, panels, and components. So if you see a question on a quiz or a midterm asking for the organization of the, um, the components, you need to choose the one that says tabs, panels, and components. If you notice, uh, each panel, if you click on the on the black bar if it has a down arrow that means that there are more components than what's shown on the panel uh, basically it doesn't show every single component because then this part will be just full of components uh, they probably wouldn't even fit you just know that whatever a panel has a down arrow that means that it contains more components than it's displaying some of them don't have it, for example, matrix. Oops, actually it does. Maybe it's too small to show the down arrow. This video is getting too long, so what I'll do is I'll stop it here and then do uh, or finalize the rest of the user interface on another video.